It's Chad Nalon and Jonathan Simon live and exclusive on Fox Sports for Armour All Qualifying. It was a hit last week, and we're going to dive straight into one of the best tracks in the world, Mount Panorama, tonight. And this is going to be fantastic. Jonathan, you have a ton of sim racing experience, a ton of iRacing experience, and this is one of the hardest tracks to master. A track brought to iRacing back in 2013. Every nook and cranny at this circuit was laser scanned, millimeter perfect. Even the letterboxes of some of the houses, Chad, were <laughs> laser scan and brought to the service this is the real thing brought to everybody virtually and if you are still new to iRacing you are going to love just how realistic this is it's a track that we know and love so much in Australia and we're going to see 29 drivers tackle this circuit including four wild cards and it's one of those wild cards already on top Brody Kostecki a man who spends a lot of time in his sim at home has gone straight to the top there he is the man they call Bush and how about the number 201.6 so we are into the ones that is insane i remember thinking when jensen button tested the mclaren formula one car around here he was in the one minute 40s, 40s <laughs> and to bring this beast of a, of a vehicle as i think he tapped the wall there to bring this hold and in, into the two minute one range is incredible but for those who don't know Brody Kostecki does set up these cars so we talk about parody here chad well a bit of a controversial topic there yeah well Everyone runs the same setup, it's just that he's the man who gets to set them up, so he knows exactly how good these cars are going to be. And he was an extremely aggressive driver at the opening round of the Super 2 Series, which he is currently leading the points for. And uh, we think back to Adelaide, he was pulling off some almighty moves. How about this one on Jordan Boys, late in the final race on Sunday. How did he get that thing stopped? Very similar look on those cars tonight as well. That is his real-world Erebus Super 2 car a few months ago. It feels like a few years ago now, unfortunately, seeing Brody Kostecki on track doing the real deal. So cool to see uh, Eggleston Motorsport step into the sim racing world with him and bringing some new partners on board as well. And he's my teammate too as well, officially, in the sim racing world. We race, race for the Apex Racing Team, so I've gotten to know him over the past month since he's joined us, and he's an absolute phenomenal sim racer as he deals with a multitude of traffic here but here's one driver as well a wild card into the series this driver very familiar with open wheelers he's driven around here once before will power yeah, this is mega i mean last week we had max verstappen and that pulled thousands of viewers from all around the world and to have a guy with Will Power's credentials, I mean, he's actually gone further and won more than Max Verstappen in the real world scenario. An Indy 500 winner in 20, uh, 2018, and then obviously his 2014 IndyCar championship as well to go with it. Multiple times a runner up in IndyCar. But like you mentioned, has actually got Bathurst experience. Did run the great race back in 2002 with Mark Larkham. So it was a Ford back then, not a Mustang. But how cool to see him in a Shell V Power Mustang with the Verizon signage on the doors just to give it that IndyCar feel. And he's hustling this thing up through McPhillamy. What a shot. This is like drone footage <laughs> in the next few years that we might get. But like I said, oh, oh, he's driving this. It's like it's on rails right now. He's been very quick in the timing screens, Will Power. He's yet to set a time this session. And you might be joining us and wondering, why are we in the middle of a session? So, to be honest with you, this is a 20-minute qualifying session. Then we have an Armour All Top 10 shootout later on. And so, right now, these drivers are about to finish. This will determine our Top 10 that will go through to the shootout. And this also determines the grid slots from 11 to 30. And if our Penske Racing driver here doesn't set a lap time, he won't be, uh, he won't be uh, going anywhere near the top of the timing sheet soon, obviously. So racing from Charlotte in the United States. A man with so much real world experience, but has proven to be pretty handy on the sim as well. And hopefully gonna get a lap that'll put him somewhere near the top 10, it's 13th. So 13th for Will. And interestingly, it looks like he's gonna reset straight back to the pits. Now that is not a typical strategy here. It is allowed, but the problem is it's gonna reset your fuel. Yeah, so the strategy we were expecting was for these drivers to make an actual outlap uh, and an inlap and to come in, because what this will do now for Will Power is it resets his fuel to the 65 liters every driver begins with. For the likes of Thomas Randall and Scott McLaughlin, Brody Kostecki, all these guys at the top of the screens, they'll be pitting in for a proper race inlap, 
taking a fresh set of rubber, and they'll finish the session, Chad, with around 35 litres of fuel, so a much lighter car results in quicker lap times as well. Wouldn't be Bathurst without an Armour All Top 10 shootout, and that's what the drivers are competing for right here. With just under six minutes to go in the session, this is an in-lap for Thomas Randalls. He dives into the pits. We'll hopefully see more of that uh, set up for Tom tonight. It's something that he has launched as a business today. And as we round the end of the session with five and a half minutes to go, everyone's going to come in and take their last set of tyres and head out for one last lap with about three minutes left on the clock. So very, very exciting. Also, we just got a small glimpse then of Simona Di Silvestro. How cool to see Simona back at Bathurst place where she started her real life supercars career back in 2015 so much to talk about i feel like we're sprouting <laughs> topics everywhere at the moment it's going to be a really good night mm. a quick run through the top 10 as it stands as we get set for this final run late in the session Brody Kostecki on top so you look at the the cutoff time it's at two minute 3.1 for Cameron Waters we've gone through our four wild cards already and so far two of them will make it through to the Armour All Top 10 shootout this afternoon. But for Cam Waters, two hundredths of a second up here on Gary Jacobson, who is racing at the Winton Marketing Manager's house at the moment. He's using a direct drive wheel, and he's had the community try and support him to make it into the top 10. But let's see how Scotty Byer goes. He's down the order, crosses the line, and no improvement uh, for him. He's still in 19th. 203.67. So. Good lap. I mean, we're talking about 2036s. That's a mega lap any day of the week at Bathurst. Unfortunately, you're almost going to need a run of two to make the shootout here. SCT Logistics and Jack Smith. Cool to see Jack on the Gold Coast running for Brad Jones Racing. Good look at his sim setup there as well. He's running a next level rig and also Thrustmaster Will with Phonetic Peels, uh, Pedals. So cool to be able to see Jack Smith for the first time in the broadcast. One of the youngsters in the field, just 20 years of age. He and Jake Kostecki, the youngest. He qualified 14th here last oh, year. But it was... Oh, uh oh. <laughs> now, he had a very similar moment to that in his first ever trip to Bathurst at Paul Morris Motorsport. He got that car out of there quickly. Probably a wise move given that there were a few drivers on approach and a very, very fast and difficult part of the track to avoid anyone stuck on the road. How did he lose this one? Comes through Skyline, not close enough to the wall, and he's tried to compensate for that. And he's picked up and a tremendous amount of oversteer. You want to bleed off the brakes gradually, but he couldn't do that because he would have skipped the, uh, into the runoff zone, and that would have deleted the lap time. But with three minutes left, he should be able to squeeze one more lap in as our championship leader, Scott McLaughlin, screams through now the top of the mountain. Oh, Scotty. Again, frustrated with himself, similar to what we saw last week at Barcelona. He sits fourth at 2.02.3, which is uh, a full second quicker than he's been in the real world scenario around this track. And he's going to shortcut this thing. We saw that uh, reaction when he just clipped the wall, and that would have discounted the lap time as well, which is why he's back straight out of it. Thumped the steering wheel just like he did last time out at Barcelona. At Barcelona. So there you go. But the cutoff time now, Chad, is still, while well, it's down to Lee Holdsworth, the 2 minute 3.0. I've been very impressed by Lee Holdsworth's qualifying performances. I feel like with one circuit this week to practice as Frosty. Oh, no. Oh, that's a Dick Johnson moment. He very nearly caught it. And it just wipes the right rear guard down the fence. It was almost an amazing save. Will he bring this thing back? He's just out of time. Doesn't matter now to try and start a new lap on fresher tyres. So it won't work out for the Irwin Tools car. So the cutoff time, like I was saying, is Lee Holdsworth, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. And look how close the gaps are. You've got the Penske car, Fabian Coulthard, right there. Cameron Waters hasn't improved since his earlier time. Neither has Gary Jacobson or Will Power. And in the closing stages, these are the drivers we're looking out for. I think everybody on the left-hand screen up to Chaz Mostert should be safe. But from Thomas Randall onwards, you don't know if you'd be comfortable with a two minutes, uh, 2.7 at the moment. So Cam Waters in Singworks gear. Race winner last time out at Silverstone. On the podium in the opening weeks as well at Monza. So pretty good start to this championship and 
sitting nicely in the championship, chasing down Scott McLaughlin in the BP Ultimate point score. So a great start to his campaign. Spends quite a bit of time in the city. Very versatile driver that does quite a bit of speedway racing as well. Here's a man that you brought up earlier in Gary Jacobson. He's taken on a new Motum sim rig. Up in Shepparton. He's going to whip this thing down through the chase. And Thomas Randall improves to fifth. And that should... That, I think they should be safe there for the Super 2 driver. So we've got two Super 2 runners up into the top 10 in this Armour All qualifying session. 30 seconds left here. Traffic management going to be critical as they approach Murray's. Oops, and that was Cam Waters in the fence and out of action. And that was going to be his run. He just started a hot lap. He stuck 12th and will not be making the shootout. Meanwhile, seeing some quick sectors here on screen. Deep Pasquale is looking quick. He sits third at the moment, but first, what happened to Cameron Waters? Under the tree. Oh, the back end stood out. He chased it all the way around the grate. And that was a wild, wild moment for the Monster Energy car. Had a bit of traffic to deal with. Two yeah. did Waters, so that wouldn't have helped at all heading through Reed Park. And here comes Anton. He has been the man in qualifying so far. Very quick at every single round of the championship, at every single track that we've gone to. Picked up back-to-back -back pole awards at Phillip Island and Monza. Silverstein, he picked one up there as well. And then fourth at Barcelona. So he's definitely the quickest in armor qualifying trim. Can he finish this lap? A 2.01.8 is his best. He needs to find about two tenths per second to pick up the lap from Brody Kostecki, which is his real-world co-driver. These guys looking pretty good for a future Erebus seat when they get set for the Enduros. And how cool is that Anzac Day livery that we can see on the side of the 99? Working together last week, those two. And let's see if they dominate the top of the timing screens. For Di Pasquale, his sector times look absolutely stunning. And as he crosses the line, he remains third, but improves by half a second. Only, uh, I mean, that's nothing splitting your top three at the moment. Cannot wait. And almost on the button, Will Power goes to 10th. Has anyone got anything left for Will Power? The Shell V Power Verizon car has somehow snuck into the shootout. How cool is this? <laughs> We've got three out of our four wild cards potentially looking at a start in the Armour All shootout. How about Scott Pye, that a walt car? Gets a bit of that curb at the chase, lifts him up. He sits 20th, but we're seeing some green sectors for him, so maybe an improvement here. Streams on Twitch to Scott Pye if you want to check him out. Does do a lot of work with the engineers behind the scenes. Here he comes, and he improves, and not enough to climb him into the top 10. Nice work, though. He sits 19th, all the way down through 29 cars. Brody Kostecki on top. Chris Pither rounding out the field with a 207.9. Very difficult to drive one of these supercars around Mount Panorama, even in the iRacing scenario. But what about this story? Brody Kostecki, a wild card for the night, driving out of Melbourne, originally from Perth, with a bit of Eggleston backing, and putting this car on top with a 201.67. Here is your BP Ultimate results. Very close between the top three. And like you mentioned, he was actually engineering Anton Di Pasquale last week. They'll be co-drivers for the Enduros later. There's a fairly sizable gap back to everyone else. This is going to be a very intense top 10 shootout later on to cap off Armour All qualifying. We say goodbye to these guys for the rest of qualifying today. And down to Simona Del Silvestro who rounds out the field. But uh, Chad, I tell you what, this is an, as intense as the real thing here at Mount Panorama.